Oh, can I look at a demon now? 
He's come, Bibidi Founder Acharya, His Divine Grace. Havai Charanar in the Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahamsa Paripad, Kacharya Sutra Shatu Shushimad, Bhakti Shidanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaja Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai. Nama Charya Shri Haridas Takura Ki Jai. Prem Sikha Sikha Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar. Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna. Gopa Gopina, Chama Kunda, Radha Radha Kunda, Giri Gopa Dana Kija, Sri Vrindavan Mathura Dama Kija, Sri Sri Chakadat Purini Rachal Dama Kija, Sri Sri Maya Purnavadip Dama Kija, Bhakti Devi Kija, Sri Mati Tulasi Devi Kija, Ganga Mai Kija, Yamuna Mai Kija, Harinam Sankirtan Yagya Kija, Sri Prabhupada's Transcendent Book Distribution Kija, Iskang Radha Desha Kija, Shri Radha Gopina Tarita Vishakya Devi Ki Jai Shri Jagannath Baradev Shubhadra Maharani Ki Jai Shri Giri Govardhana Ki Jai Shri Gaurani Tai Ki Jai Sama Fitta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Oh Gauri Sturiya Sama Devoris 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 Oh Gauri Sturiya Guru and Shri Gauran Oh Gauri Sturiya Shri Guru
वसुदेवाय We're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 4, Ambarish Maharaj, Offended by Durvasa Muni, text number 22. Ije Dhar Adiyagya Mishwaram Mahabhibhutyopachitangadakshinai <laughs> Sita Gautama Devi Tatar Vasishta Sita Gautama Devi Tatar Vasishta Sita Asal Sarasvatim Dhanvanya Vishrottam Asal Sarasvatim All 
Prophets E.J. E. Worshipped Ashamedai by performing the horse sacrifice yagyas. Adiyagnyam to satisfy the master of all yagyas. Ishvaram All of these. The Supreme Personality of God. The Supreme Personality of God. <coughs> Mahavibhutya Maha with great opulence. Upachita Anga Dakshinai with all prescribed paraphernalia and contributions of Dakshina to the Brahmins. Tatai, Tatai executed, executed. Vasishta Asita Gotama Adibi by such Brahmanas as Vasishta Asita and Dambani in the desert. Abhisrotam inundated by the water of the river. Asau Maharaj Ambarisha Sarasvatim on the bank of the Sarasvati. Translation and purport by Swami Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Translation. In desert countries where there flowed the river Sarasvati, Maharaj Ambarisha performed great sacrifices like the Ashwamedha Yagya and thus satisfied the masters of all yagyas, the Supreme Personality of God. Such sacrifices were performed with great opulence and suitable paraphernalia and with contributions of dakshina to the brahmanas who were supervised by great personalities like Vasishta, Asita and Gotama representing the king, the performer of the sacrifice. <clears throat> Purport. When one performs ritualistic sacrifices as prescribed in the Vedas, one needs expert Brahmins known as Yajnika Brahmins. Yajnika. In Kali Yuga, however, there is a scarcity of such Brahmins. Therefore, in Kali Yuga, the sacrifice recommended in Shastra is Sankirtan Yagya. Yagya Sankirtana Prayay Yajanti Hi Sumedasa. Instead of spending money unnecessarily on performing yagyas, impossible to perform in this age of Kali because of the scarcity of yagnika Brahmas. <coughs> One who is intelligent performs Sankirtan Yajna. Without properly performing yagyas to satisfy the Supreme Personality of God, there will be scarcity of rain. <coughs> Yajnat Bhavati Parjanya. Therefore, the performance of yagya is essential. Without yajna there will be a scarcity of rain and because of this scarcity no food grains will be produced and there will be famines. It is the duty of the king therefore to perform different types of yajna such as the ashramedha yajna to maintain the production of food grains. <coughs> <coughs> 
Anat Bhavanti Bhutani. Without food grains, both men and animals will starve. Therefore, yajna is necessary for the state to perform because by yajna, the people in general will be fed sumptuously. The brahmanas and yajnika priests should be sufficiently paid for their expert service. This payment is called dakshina. Am Ambarisha Maharaj, as the head of the state, performed all these yajnas through great personalities like Vasishta, Gotama, and Asita. Personally, however, he was engaged in devotional service, as mentioned before, Savai Mana Krishna Padaravinda the king or head of state, must see that things go on well under proper guidance and he must be an ideal devotee as exemplified by Maharaj Ambarisha. It is the duty of the king to see that food grains are to this verse, I'll read the translation again. In, in desert countries where there flowed the river Saraswati, Maharaj Ambarisha performed great sacrifices, like the Ashram Eda Yagya, and thus satisfied the master of all yagyas, the supreme personality of Godhead. Such sacrifices were performed with great opulence and suitable paraphernalia and with contributions of dakshina to the brahmanas who were supervised by great personalities like Vasishta, Asita and Gautama representing the king, the performer of the sacrifices. This verse and um, several verses leading up to and continuing are setting the stage for events to come, uh, which will be, you can say, the main reason that we hear about, uh, about um, Amber Isha Maharaj, uh, and for which we celebrate him. Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purport that he is a devotee and therefore he engages in devotional service and he engages all these Brahmins in doing all these uh, what we sometimes in English call hocus pocus. <laughs> uh, uh, all the rituals which they are qualified to do and they're particularly qualified because they are guided. And how are they guided? They're guided by great, great sages uh, and we have some of them mentioned here. Uh, the suggestion is that there's in a sense two things going on here. There's ordinary religion in the form of the performance of sacrifices and indeed it has to be recognized that Ashvamedha is it's a sacrifice and what sort of sacrifice it's a blood sacrifice it involves the, uh, the slaughter of a horse, but actually in a standard Ashvamedha uh, there are really quite many animals killed. According to one source, uh, over 300 animals would be sacrificed in a proper complete Ashvamedha. Um, smaller animals mostly and then one horse. And so this is a bit shocking to us, uh, but this is religion. How is this religion? Well, it involves uh, a very uh, developed, what we may call technology. And it's a technology which is 
uh, very much lost in the present age. The technology we understand when it was per properly performed had a benefit not only to um, the land but also to the animals that were sacrificed. That seems to be no longer the case and so um, there are processes of substitution and Srila Prabhupada mentions uh, not in the context of substitution but uh, in, in, the, in a broader sense of benefiting everyone the Sankirtan Yajna as our process of yajna. Um, but back to um, back to um, our our hero, King Ambarisha, uh, he is sponsoring these sacrifices. Indeed, he pays for them, dakshina, <laughs> uh, and so they, uh, which is essential if the king does not. Uh, or if the sponsor, the yajamana, does not uh, properly remunerate those who per are performing the yajna, then the yajna has no benefit for the yajamana. It's cancelled, basically. <laughs> so the, 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 the concluding ritual, the concluding rite of um, bestowing, uh, of, of offering dakshina to the to the priest is is really essential. Now one can can be a little mm, skeptical here and say, well, who wrote those texts? It was the Brahmins, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, but uh, be that as it may, uh, still there is a system, and that's that's how religion works. Religion, there are rules. And when the rules are followed, everyone is happy, everyone's satisfied. But above and beyond all of this, we can say, or in, we can say that the Ashramedha and so on is included in Ambarisha's performing of devotional service because in the verse it says, Adiyagyamishvaram, the object of the sacrifice was Adiyagya, uh, who is Ishvara, the Lord. So that's, that's devotion service. But uh, we also read before, Savai mana krishna padara vindayo vachamsi vaikunta vunan varnane karo harer mandiramar janadishu shuting chakara chutas shatkato daye, etc. That uh, Ambrish is busy doing all sorts of things. And what does he start with? What's the first thing he does? <coughs> the, 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 the clue is in the first line of that verse. Sa vai mana Krishna Tandaraja. First thing he does is. <laughs> He places his mind at the lotus feet of Krishna. Yes. Um, he engages his mind. So, yes, and then he goes on. What else does he do? He cleans the temple floor. <laughs> he goes to the temple. Uh, he uses his feet to uh, go to the temple. He uses his hands to clean the floor and so on. And so, uh, you know, clean the temple. And so many other activities, all very devotional. And then, uh, in a very devotional way, but also following, very much following rules, following the uh, ritual process, what else does he do? He observes Ekadashi. <laughs> and this is where the trouble starts. Mm -hmm. Because he's such a perfect observant of Ekadashi, uh, he comes into a ritual dilemma. And what is the dilemma? He has to break the fast before a certain time. Devotees somehow get very caught up in this. We, we get very worried. 
Although we don't worry very much about when we chant Gayatri Mantra in the morning, noon, and evening, as a proper smart Brahmin would, would be very concerned, has to be uh, just as the sun is coming over the horizon, you know, halfway or whatever, and uh, etc. We don't worry much about that. Bhakti, you know, Thakur tells us, don't worry about it so much. But somehow devotees get very worried about the exact time for breaking fast. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ambarish Maharaj was concerned to get it right, and uh, now comes the problem. And the problem is Durvasa Muni, and we all know Durvasa Muni has this terrible temper, and if we, <laughs> if, if we cross him, who knows what's going to happen. He could, he could cancel out. The, all the benefit of, of uh, doing this, this fast and so forth. What to do, what to do, what to do. Oh, drinking water is both fasting and not fasting. Okay, so he drinks water. Dhruva uh, not Dhruva, Dhruvasa uh, decides he's, he decides to be very offended. Did he have to be offended? Nah. But he decides he's going to be offended and so um, we know, or we will hear, what's going to happen. Now, we may say, and we often celebrate uh, that Ambarish Maharaj, we celebrate him as a person who is very tolerant. Which is interesting, because what does Ambarish do when, um, when, when uh, Durvasa sends this monster after him? He thinks of Krishna, what else does he do? Huh? Yeah. Something else happens. He accepts it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he has, it, maybe I misread this myself, uh, but he, <laughs> he has the uh, control the Sudarshan <coughs> chakra and uh, he releases it or the Lord releases it through Ambarish in any case whew, off goes Sudarshan and that's when uh, Durvasa gets chased by Sudarshan chakra right so Ambarish is very tolerant and in his tolerance the Sudarshan chakra goes after his um, adversary interesting so I thought we could uh, think a little more about the subject of tolerance which came up on Sunday when we were uh, discussing another uh, celebrated figure of tolerance who was that? Hi. yeah Haridas Thakur um, and there, at that uh, discussion, we, uh, the, the issue of how far should tolerance go be, because we think generally of tolerance as inaction. Uh, just, you know, I just kind of hold my breath and I endure whatever is, is the situation. <coughs> Between Sunday and today, I came across a very nice um, point about tolerance that I thought to share from His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj. He says, tolerance, what is tolerance? Tolerance is facing a negative situation with a positive attitude. I thought, that's really cool. <laughs> that covers everything. Because it doesn't mean inaction, necessarily. It might mean, you know, keeping quiet, keeping your, <clears throat> your sitting on your hands, or it might be doing something, it might be acting. Uh, and, and so it, it opens up a whole range uh, of, of possibilities. So 
So I also came across um, an interesting and I think helpful in this regard um, sort of discussion uh, of humility by His Holiness Dhanadar Swami Maharaj and I want to quote a little bit of that. <coughs> um, he, in, in his blog, uh, he's been giving, he gave 15 different points about humility and this one is uh, number 11, adhering to dharma and accepting karma. Okay? So he says, karma, destiny, is what happens to us and dharma is the science of reacting appropriately. Both serve the cause of humility. He goes on to say, Destiny loudly announces that we are not the control. If, in addition to hearing this humbling call, we accept and then experience our karma, our destiny, for what it is, Krishna's mercy. Our destiny is Krishna's mercy. We develop a mood of shelter and dependence. These feelings are the foundations of humility. Then he says, Dharma, the proper response to what destiny destiny places before us means to consciously choose what is right, not just what we like. This type of modest acceptance of an authority higher than our own whims and desires, this mark of character is practically the definition of humility. Does that make any sense? <laughs> so he's, he's, um, he's saying dharma is, a, is the proper response to karma. Karma is destiny. Destiny is actually Krishna's mercy. Uh, to act according to dharma is to do, to act according, to choose what is right. And that choosing of what is right has to do with accepting of authority higher than our own whims and desires. Yeah, and this is a mark of character, uh, which he says is practically the definition of humility. Now at this point you may say, oh, so it all boils back down to authority. We have to accept authority. Yeah. And then, you know, there we go again. These swamis are telling us you have to listen to authority. Well, but where is the ultimate authority? Ultimate authority is Krishna, but where do we find Krishna? After we have heard from sadhus, after we have heard from Shastra, after we have heard from Guru. What do we have? We have the Lord in our heart. Yeah. So acting according to the Lord in the heart. And that br brings us um, a sense also of, it brings us an attitude of gratitude. Uh, even in a negative situation. And an example of that is Vidura. Vidura never got along with Duryodhana. And at one point Duryodhana cut loose and just yelled at Vidura about how he was always siding with the Pandavas. And finally he can't, he can't hold himself back anymore. He says, you should get out of here. What are you doing here anyway? Get out! And Vidura grabs his staff, <laughs> his danda, and he says, Bye! <laughs> I'm out of here, and Prophet explains, or it's in the verse, uh, he was actually grateful 
to, to Duryodhana. He was grateful. And he didn't leave just for the afternoon. <laughs> he left for 30 years. According to one source I read, it was 30 years he went on pilgrimage. When he comes back, of course, Duryodhana is dead, and it, practically everyone else is dead. Uh, Dhritarashtra is still somehow hanging on. But the point is um, that he is thankful to Duryodhana, and that gives him uh, this positive attitude with which he can then tolerate all, all sorts of circumstances. Yeah, so that's very nice. Okay, um, I don't want to drag this on too much, but here's a definition of tolerance from the Oxford uh, English Dictionary. I know we love Oxford English Dictionary definitions. <laughs> the disposition to be patient with or indulgent or indulgent to the opinions or practices of others. Freedom from bigotry or undue severity in judging the conduct of others can also mean forbearance or catholicity of spirit. What is catholicity of spirit? Nothing to do with the Catholic Church. Catholicity means inclusiveness, a broad, broad-mindedness, we might say, something like that. Yeah. Um, so, let's see, so much more could be said about tolerance, uh, all the way from how parents tolerate their own children. Why? Out of love. So, the kids do all kinds of outrageous things, but uh, the parents tolerate. Similarly, of course, Krishna tolerates us. We sometimes uh, want to say, as, as we heard before, that's too much. <laughs> well, just consider how too much we are to Krishna sometimes. <laughs> that's too much. But does Krishna ever say, that's too much? No. He always says, okay, try again. <laughs> And of course, uh, Krishna, I mean, this is really our starting point uh, in devotional service, is to think of Krishna's qualities, isn't it? So, uh, 64 qualities of Krishna. One of them is forbearance, forbearing. Uh, anyone happen to remember the example for Krishna's forbearance? Mm, close, but not quite. When he was kicked in the chest, that's a nice example, but no, not that one. Not in that kind of devotion. Yes, that's it. Very good. Mm. He he was forbearing to the conditions uh, that that came in the forest when. Well, not just in the forest, but uh, Prabhupada said all, all the uh, different tasks that the guru gives to the disciple, uh, the disciple is forbearing. And a specific example is when he goes to the forest and the rain comes and so on. Then, uh, forgiving is another example. And uh, forgiving, who does Krishna forgive? We heard. Shishupala. Shishupala, yes. But he doesn't forgive him forever, does he? <laughs> How many times? 100 times. I always like to think he had a. <laughs> 54, 55. <laughs> And another one, which is very interesting, is uh, impartiality. And the example here, anyone know, um, what is the example, the illustration of Krishna's impartiality? Rain falls 
Maybe with Duryodhan when he asked Duryodhan to choose for for him or the army. That, these are both good examples, but they're not quite the one from which he goes. Did he even liberate Sputana who came to kill uh -huh. That would also be good. <laughs> Maybe Ramachandra, uh, when, uh, when uh, the brother of Ravana comes to surrender. When? When the brother of Ravana comes to surrender. Oh. And then he says that he would even accept Ravana. <laughs> also a good example, but no. <laughs> huh? I can't hear. Yes. In the battlefield, on the battlefield. Okay. Uh, okay, possibly, but no. <laughs> Sorry. It was, it's uh, in his engagement with uh, Kaliya. With Kaliya, yes. How is that? Because, and again, I think this is a nice example of tolerance, but it's not that Krishna said, okay, anyway, he's also a spirit soul and he has a right to, you know, to poison. Uh, the, the Yamuna River, and anyway, what to do, it's, it's Krishna's mercy. Oh, that's me, I'm Krishna. Uh, and all the cows and the coward boys are dead. Anyway, what to do, I'll just think of it in a positive way. No, he goes out and attacks him. And uh, in a very wonderful way, he attacks him. He, has some good fun dancing on his heads, right? So much fun and entertaining everyone who's watching and also making them terrified because uh, first he's letting himself be strangled. But he is uh, uh, impartial to Kaliya because, for one thing, he lets him live in the end. And uh, he, he lets him go. He says, okay, now it's time for you to go. And so he, he it's live and let live, so to say, but go live somewhere. <laughs> go live somewhere else, please. <laughs> and, and so he invites him to leave. So that's, these are examples uh, of tolerance. So we're constantly, uh, confronted with negative situations, negative people, negative circumstances. What to do with them? If we can face them with a positive attitude, which at the very least is, I don't know what to do in this situation, but Krishna is sending it to me. He's not sending it to somebody else. He's sending it to me. Or Maybe he's sending it to all of us. Um, what, to, what is Krishna's purpose behind this? Let's try to find out. And then, and then seeing what is to be done. Always something to be done, even if that something is keeping quiet. But sometimes it means speaking up and saying something, right? Sometimes we might have to say something. This is not right. <laughs> this situation could is good, but it could be improved. <laughs> and so on. We could expand uh, Krishna consciousness so much more if, in addition to what we're doing, we could, like that, we can speak up. Hare Krishna, I will end there if there's a comment, a question, suggestion. that because he, he is very strongly acting with him. Uh, not only that, he plays with him, he dances, he punishes him. That chapter is called 
uh, punishment. What is it? Punishment of Kaviya. Kaviya Dhammana. Dhammana punishment. Uh, I would say like this, just as a parent may punish his or her child, um, there's a certain impartiality there. Or if, if a parent has two children, um, there will be impartiality. Um, and this may involve engaging with them in different ways, including uh, a punishment. So, in that sense, Krishna is impartial. Uh, partial, yeah, you could say he's impartial in a negative sense of we don't care about you, Kaliya, because I really care about my friends. Uh, we might say in that sense impartial. There's two sides to impartial. Uh, okay. I mean, Kaliya, you said he, he, he was expressing some sense of regret. Yeah. Um, so, so why did he send Kaliya away? No, because of the wives. <coughs> huh? the wives. The wives of Kaliya were praying for him. Yeah, but why else? I mean, why? what if he would let him stay there? There's a problem. He's, he's a real polluter. He, just by breathing. He can't help it. He has to breathe. Burst of death, yeah. So he's got. <laughs> so he has to breathe. He, apparently, his breath, his breathing meant death to other living entities. Okay, but not in Vrindavan. Vrindavan's my special place. <laughs> yeah. He said something towards the end. If there's a situation that we should try to find out what is the meaning. Is, should we be active or just some, I mean, just sometimes we cannot figure it out or later will be a revelation? Or is, you said it in a way like we should make some active endeavor to find out what is the reason why Krishna makes it like that? It could be. My point was that our general attitude in difficult circumstance, negative, whatever it is, uh, can be positive. If we start with a positive attitude, I'm preaching to myself, uh, if we start with a positive attitude that, oh, Krishna may have something, uh, you know, some purpose here for me, uh, let me see if I can uh, realize what that is. So then you're saying, does that mean looking for why Krishna's doing something to cause it might be meaning that, but not necessarily. In other words, how, how, how far can we go to understand Krishna's mind? Krishna always has multiple purposes with everything. Uh, and, and we make the best of, also, as Prabhupada would say, we make the best use of bad bargain. Uh, but what I'm saying is, uh, with a positive attitude, then we may get intelligence from Krishna what to do. Because what does Krishna say, Tesham Satata Yukta? If you're always engaged in service to me, then I'll give you Buddhi Yoga. Krishna speaks of Buddhi Yoga twice in the Bhagavad Gita. Did you know that we are practicing Buddhi Yoga? <laughs> Not only Bhakti Yoga, but Buddhi Yoga. Prabhupada says Buddhi Yoga means Bhakti Yoga. <laughs> So, um, some action, sometimes we have to uh, take responsibility and do something, do the needful, not just tolerate in a negative sense. I think my main point is tolerate doesn't just mean sitting on our hands. <laughs> tolerate can mean also being active, but being intelligently active. Yeah. You mentioned in the beginning that uh, if the priests are not uh, 
given the proper adoption, yeah. then the sacrifice is not anymore. Yeah. Do you think that, maybe this is a lot of questions, perhaps in our Suddenly the priests come running out from the altar from and the say, altar. yes, therefore, <laughs> you got to pay us. <laughs> The days of yore. <laughs> uh, they received dakshina, but apparently they received enough. And another point, though, is that in days of yore, Brahmins didn't have to pay, uh, you know, huge amounts of money just to have a shelter over their head. Uh, now, now the economy has gone in such a way that people spend most of their time just paying for the, uh, for the roof over their heads. Isn't that? Uh, for most of their lives, right? You, you have to get a loan from the bank and you pay it back for 30 years just for the roof over your head. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. So, yeah. Difficult. Brahmins in modern times, I read an article some time ago of uh, priests in the Sri Vaishnav tradition in South India uh, who are employed in America in temples and they get a salary uh, which is quite substantial. I mean, they can live comfortably, they have their home, they have their car. Uh, you know, they can go on vacation, you know, all these things. <laughs> uh, and every, I mean, I don't know how it works, I'm sure it's sort of similar here in Europe, but in America, every minister or priest of, of, the, um, of the Protestant Christian tradition pastor, minister, priest, they get their salary. Uh, the community of that church, they cover the costs of the priest or the, or the minister or whatever. They, and, you know, it's a certain amount. Um, and, uh, you know, they kind of live like everyone else. They, they live they have their house and their car and <laughs> their vacation for two weeks or whatever. Yeah. Do you know how the, <coughs> that actually Brahmins should not get salary or should not be from the situation of actually the regular support? Yes, that idea is also there. What do they get? They get dakshin. So it's not that they're not paid. So, yes, right, it's not that they get a set amount, uh, they get adoption. But whether that works in a modern society where most people have to pay most of their um, whatever they get just for the uh, roof over the head and where they have children and so on, that's an issue. Something sometimes might need to be adjusted. Yes. Yeah. Um, you were explaining in the beginning also that in the time of Bali, in the time of Ashwamedha, I guess there are around 300 animals being sacrificed. How do we explain it actually now? What, are, what were the benefits before and <laughs> maybe there are benefits now and we don't see it. How do you explain it? <laughs> Well, there are no benefits now because it's not uh, prescribed for this age <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Therefore, uh, Sankirtan Yagya. 
Yatra Sankirtane Naiva Sarvasvarto Hilavyate. In this age, it's sanctity. What were the benefits in earlier times? Prabhupada mentions here, Amna Bhavanti Bhutani Parjanyat Amnasambhava. Uh, this cycle, mm, uh, Pravartitam Chakram, it's um, keeping the whole cosmic system going with the rain, with the grain, uh, and so on. Uh, how is that maintained today? The claim, what Prabhupada is saying, is, uh, is also yajna, but a different kind of yajna, sankirtan yajna. Uh, yeah, and how many, in how many purports does Prabhupada make this, this point? There again and again. Uh, the idea of why, why this killing of animals, the sacrificing of animals, that's a big topic um, and it's uh, very complicated. Sometime maybe I'll give a seminar on that. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's also a bit depressing. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, was, uh, it was what uh, Buddhism rejected, and yes. Prabhupada explains uh, the Lord came as Buddha uh, in order to you know, correct the excesses which were happening. And so it's, it's quite possible that the text in which uh, is mentioned, you know, this ash, uh, one, one horse plus these 300 animals, it's quite possible that this uh, text appears at a later time. It's not in the Rig Veda. Huh? Uh, it's uh, one of the Yagya, one of, one of the texts, one of the technical texts. And when and how this appears. Okay. Thank you all very much. Have a nice day today. Shiva Prabhupada Ki. Grantara Shiman Bhagavatam Ki.
Oh, this 
that's very much sketching. Yeah. It's, it's a nice relation.
Krishna, 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 Krishna,